John, uh, it seemed like a very unusual game. Not much room to, for either team to get much going on offense for most of the time. It was just one of those, it was hockey, I'd say it was close checking. It's, did you expect that? Is it just a it's a, it's a playoff lacrosse game, it's a championship game. <clears throat> Teams are going to play tighter. You know, 2 2 is definitely an uncharacteristic uncharacter score in half. Um, you know, I, did, I, I thought we played hard, we just didn't shoot the ball very well. That's probably why we didn't score many goals. John, that play with uh, Ethan O'Connor early in the fourth quarter seemed to be a, 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 one of the bigger plays of the game, obviously, considering they came back and scored on the other end. Just talk about that sequence. And well, get back to that. I mean, he called it in the crease and. Uh, it was tough to see that, that he stepped in the crease before before he scored. Um, it looked really tight. I, I agree. There was probably not enough evidence to overturn it. I was just impressed by that call. You know, that's a really tight tight call to make at that point in the game. It was obviously two goal swing. Seemed to be the turning point in the game. Josh, it seemed like early on, you guys were getting frustrated on offense right from the get go. Was this maybe the most difficult game of the season? To just getting chances to drop tonight. Yeah, I think we kind of got away from our game plan a little bit. Um, we were clogging the middle the entire time, and just, there was just not enough space in between us. Uh, the good thing is, though, is that those are fixable things, and we're, we're going to take care of that. Corey, did it feel like the team that got a couple goals in a row was, was going to take control? It seems like nobody could get any sort of momentum, which is unusual in lacrosse if game runs. Yeah, I mean, after that first half, uh, you can tell goals are going to be a premium um, coming into the second half. And, I mean, they got a couple uh, a couple goal run there. And um, offensively, we had to do a better job of, uh, of scoring in bunches, and we didn't really do that. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, as JT said, you know, better shots. Um, you know, maybe taking a half, half second or split second to, to pick a spot rather than uh, kind of shoot blind because uh, he was definitely challenging us as shooters, and uh, we just got to be more accurate with our shots. Steve, for as much as, you know, their defense was shutting you guys down, I mean, you guys were, kept them going, you know, two to a half, um, and, you know, through that third quarter, um, really no scoring on either side. So what were you guys, what did you guys have going to help shut them down for most of that game? Uh, we, had our, we had our game plan put in by the coaches, and it, it was working, you know, it worked the whole, the whole game, except for when we didn't do it. And, uh, and you saw that little stretch they had in the fourth where, you know, they got about three goals in a row and, and we, we didn't answer the other way. We, we made a push at the end, but, you know, it's, we're going to we're gonna have to adjust to, uh, adjust to the refereeing a little bit to see what we, what we can get away with and what we can't. Like, they, it seems that they, can, they were coming in and hitting us pretty good with those picks. And uh, so we're going to have to adjust to that and moving forward. Is it tough to keep that pressure up all game when you're not scoring on the other end and, you know, it's a little scoring on both sides? It's not tough. It's fun. It's fun lacrosse. You know, that's that's why we play the game. We play to 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 be part of something bigger than ourselves. And and when it's not going up front, it's it's uh, it's heartbreaking when we can't stop them in the back end. So we put that on us. Like we should have stopped them because we know our offense can get going. Steve, there was that stretch where uh, Dane Dobby had three straight goals at the end of the third and the end of the fourth. Just talk about <coughs> uh, his impact and how the challenge he presents uh, as a defensive. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's tough when he gets time and space, and he's got he's got athletes around him that can get him that time and space, and that's what we need to adjust to, and that's uh, and that was the difference. It's, you know, he sees the floor well when when we're not on him, so we got to find a way to be on him. John, obviously their goaltender has been on a, a great run in the playoffs. Is there anything you can do a little differently just to try to change things up and get him off his game a little bit, or you know? I don't think there's anything I can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you personally are. Well, definitely, you know, obviously shooting the ball. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you what we plan on doing, but uh, we definitely have to adjust to how we're shooting the ball on him. So we got to, you know, go to school on him, try to uh, find out what, where he's weak, and uh, try to stay away from what we did tonight. You know, not only do, you know, I didn't think we shot well, we didn't hit the net on opportunities as well, or we hit a lot of bodies, or we seemed to rush our shots. So. I think our shot selection was good. I just think where the ball was ending up didn't go to a good spot. Just, did, yeah. Sorry. Ahead. Did they do anything different in that second half than they were doing in the first half? Uh, well, we only got two goals in the first half, and we got five in the second. So I think they just played a man-to-man -man defense throughout the entire game and uh, pressured us. And you know they have a lot of athletes and. Uh, 
They put pressure on, on our uh, offensive guys, uh, offensive players. They take away their time and space, which makes things difficult on us. El Biaco seemed to really be a big part of their transition mm -hmm. game, getting those long passes out. How do you guys combat that? Yeah, keep the ball away from a stick, you know, <clears throat> by a second or two, react off better off shots. Um, I didn't think they killed us in transition, but they did have a couple opportunities. You know, I think this was a 5-1-5 five five lacrosse game, and they beat us 5-1-5 five five today. Josh or Corey, what's frustrating about a game like this when you guys haven't lost since April? Uh, yeah, I, it, obviously we wanted to, to want to win this one at home and put ourselves up one nothing in the series. Um, we had a great opportunity, obviously a great, great crowd tonight to, to kind of have our backs, but uh, we let one go. Um, fortunately for us, uh, the way this playoff playoffs has been turned into is a, a best of three series. So um, we've got that opportunity to go home, watch film, kind of study and get ready, get ready for next game. And um, we seem to answer well after losses through the year. So uh, we're just looking for another opportunity to bounce back here. Steve, how will you carry the uh, momentum that Bandit Land gave you into a hostile environment in Calgary? Uh, I feed off of the hostility, <laughs> just the way I feed off of our fans pumping us up. So I think something that we can do carrying forward is uh, is pushing that ball a little more, maybe uh, maybe a little bit earlier, because in their, in their end, we're going to be on the different bench, so we can push it maybe more in the first and third instead of the second and fourth, like in our barn. So maybe look for a, a faster-paced game.